Welcome back to our second video in this session where we are looking at the topic of markup and margin, those accounting ratios. We're looking at these and what we are going to be doing now is that we are going to be using this example question here called James Bond in order to demonstrate how you will use um, the concept of markup and margin. So let's read through this question. It says, James Bond commenced business as a retailer trader on 1st of April 1984. Unfortunately, during his first year's trading, James did not keep an adequate set of accounting records. However, after careful research, the following information has now been obtained concerning the year ended 31st of March 1985. So he has assets and liabilities as at April 1st, 1984, and then at the end of the financial year, 31st of March, 1985. So you have the assets and liabilities at the beginning of the financial year and also at the end of the financial year. He has fixed asset at cost of $8,000 at the beginning, but you have to calculate the ones, uh, the value at the end. He has stock in trade or his inventory at the beginning is $5,000, value $5,000, and at the end, value $21,200. He has some trade debtors or trade receivables or accounts receivables. He, there are no receivables at the beginning. Reason being is because that this business no start. So if the business no start for the first time, it is impossible for him to have credit customers on the first day that he would have started. But by the end of the year, he has $12,400 um, owed to him by his credit customers. And the opening balance at the bank at the beginning of the year, $30,000, and at the end, $15,000. He again, he has now started. So his trade creditors or accounts payable or trade payables, any of those terms you may use, at the beginning is zero because he's he has not um, started to credit from suppliers as yet. And um, but by the end of the year, he has um $4,900 owed to his credit suppliers for goods purchased on credit. So that's A. B, it says the cost of sales for the year was $91,700. In other words, the cost of the goods that he sold during the year valued $91,700. C says he has a gross profit that the gross profit was 30% of sales. Now this is important, his gross profit was 30% of sales. And from what we would have been through in our previous video with respect to our um, gross profit related to markup and margin, we can tell that from this um, statement here in C that this is a margin that is given to us here in this question because remember from our previous video our gross profit can be expressed as a percentage of sales and when it is expressed as a percentage of our seal then it is referred to as a margin so this margin is 30 percent the d says the depreciation rate for fixed assets was 10 percent straight line and that is 10% on the cost of the asset. E states, in addition to depreciation, the only profit and loss account expense items were administrative expenses, $13,700, sales and distribution expenses, $11,100. And it states that both the above items were paid entirely on a cash basis during the year. Now, what does this mean when it states that it's paid entirely on a cash basis during the year? What they're referring to here, they're not stating that you pay cash for these um, expenses. But when they refer to cash basis, remember in accounting, we have two bases for accounting. We have the accrual basis and the cash basis. 
with the cash basis it me basically means that whenever you pay the expense you record it when you receive money you record it if you don't receive any money you don't record it if you don't pay out any money you don't record it however with the accrual basis whether you pay the expense or not you must record it for that financial period whether you receive the revenue or not you must record it for that financial period so that is basically what this cash basis here mean f says that all receipts and payments including drawings have been passed through the business bank account so everything that you they receive everything they paid out went through the business bank account and g says there have been no additions to or disposals of fixed assets during the year what are we required to do we are required to prepare james bond's trading and profit and loss account in other words his income statement for the year ended 31st of march 1985 and a balance sheet or statement of financial position as at that date so this is what we have to do but you must remember there are some steps that we go through when we are doing single entry accounting now when we're doing single entry accounting in your class session we, we gave you some steps we say the first step that you will do is that you will prepare a statement of affairs to determine the opening capital of the business because if you look at the the information given here at the beginning they don't give you any capital at the beginning so we have to find out what the capital was at the beginning and basically that will be our assets minus our liabilities sorry that our assets minus our liabilities which will give us our capital at the beginning so that's our accounting equation we are going to use now the question didn't ask us to prepare a statement of fear so we don't necessarily have to dry it up in that fancy format we can just do simply an addition and subtraction to arrive at our opening capital so that's our step one our step two just reminding you of our step step two will be to prepare your bank account or your cash account or your cash book if you have both cash and bank you can you will prepare that and the reason again why you are preparing a bank or cash account is because you're trying to find out what missing figures you may have had with respect to um any let's say for example drawings um uh, because this question mentioned that drawings were they had receipts and payments including drawings went to the bank account but they don't tell us how much um drawings there were so we can use the bank account to find out the drawings uh, missing figures we can use the bank account to find out our trade receivables um which meaning how much money we receive from our credit customers and um, that is what we can use it for we can also use it to ascertain our credit suppliers any missing figure we um that we need to know we can use the bank account with respect to receipts sorry uh, any missing figure with respect to receipts and payments we can use the bank account to ascertain that figure so that's our step two our step three then would be to use control accounts or markup and or markup or margin to calculate your missing sales credit sales um and your missing purchases because if you don't have enough um information to use the control account to work to calculate your credit sales and credit purchases then you may need to use the um you may need to use the markup or margin to ascertain that figure so in this question when we look at this question we have opening debtor we don't have any opening debtors that is zero but we have closing debtors However, we don't know how much money um, James Bond received during the year from his credit customers. So that's a missing figure. And secondly, we don't know how much credit sales he had during the year. 
Okay, so those are missing figures. Those are two missing figures. So therefore, we cannot use the control account to ascertain two missing figures. This is why the question gave us the margin. And this margin is going to help us to work out what our credit sales were. And then by extension, our credit purchases. And then we would also get to know how much money we receive from the customers and how much money we receive, how much money was paid out to the suppliers. So let's go to the question and one of the first things, so that was step three um, with respect to the um, our steps, calculating our sales and purchases. Our step four then would be to um, uh, calculate, um, make adjustments for any accruals or prepayments during the period. So if you had accruals and prepayments, you will make adjustments for those in your step four. And your step five, then you will calculate the allowance for doubtful debt and depreciation if need be. And any other thing that you would need to calculate, you will calculate at your step five. And then step six would be to do your financial statements that they would have requested. So let's go to the our spreadsheet, which we have already start, um, set out with our um, James Bond question. And our first thing that we, the first thing that we're going to do here is that we are going to do um, calculate our opening capital. And how are we going to do that? We're going to use the accounting equation that our capital is equals to our assets minus our liabilities. Okay, so what are our assets from the question? If you go back to the question, our assets at the beginning, $8,000 in um, fixed assets. We have stock of $5,000. We have bank of $3,000. But when we look at the beginning, we don't have a bank of $30,000. But when we look at the beginning, we don't have any, um, we don't have any liabilities. So then obviously our assets is equals to our capital. So that would be $8,000 plus $5,000 plus $30,000, which gives us then $43,000. So our opening capital will be $43,000. So this is our opening capital, $43,000, okay? So this is our opening capital for James Bond. Now, we are going to then look at our, we are going to then look at our bank account. That's what we're going to be looking at now. And we're going to put in the entries for our bank account. We know that the opening balance on bank so balance bought down for our bank was $30,000. We don't know how much money we received from the trade debtors. So we don't know our receipts from our trade debtors. So trade debtors, we don't know how much money we received. So we're gonna put a question mark there for now. And we are going to come back to that. We're gonna put a question mark for now. We also know that we paid administrative expenses. So based on the question, we know that we paid administrative expenses of $13,700. And we also paid out $11,100 in sales and distribution. And we can record those expenses. So we have administrative expense of $13,700 and sales and distribution expense of $11,100, right? Now, we, another thing that we don't know is how much money we paid our credit suppliers. So we don't know how much money was paid to um, our credit our creditors. So we don't know how much money was paid to the creditors. So that's a question mark there. Um, the another thing that we don't know, and the question they mentioned it, was that all receipts and payments, including drawings, have been passed through the bank account. So we don't know 
how much the drawings are either. So we don't know this figure either. So we put a question mark, but we know the closing balance for our bank. 